All right, MMA fans, the samurai ghost has appeared here, Mr. Trey Ogden. Hello, sir. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm fine as well. Thanks for asking. Um, how has your morning started? Your day started in general? Good. Good. Uh, teaching MMA, taught, taught a jiu-jitsu class at a strength and conditioning session. So been on the mat. Everything is on point for your upcoming fight on September the 17th? Yep. Yeah, feeling great, man. Uh, and you look in good shape as well. Um, listen, Thank you. before we start talking about your upcoming fight, I'd like to discuss with you a little bit about your latest fight and the, uh, you know, the split decision loss to Jordan Levitt. Uh, I mean, we spoke, I believe we spoke ahead of, of that clash. Uh, it went down in April. It was your first UFC fight. What happened from your point of view, of course? Uh, well, a couple of things like uh, Jordan Levitt doesn't have a very uh, aggressive style of fighting. He doesn't really, he's like a master of the art of fighting without fighting. That's how, how I conceptualize it. So uh, it was like the first time I've really been in a cage with somebody that wasn't trying to hurt me or even trying to finish me. Uh, it felt like he was just trying to like outpoint me with like little leg kicks and stuff. But the kicks were so light and they didn't hurt at all. So I didn't, I wasn't like keeping track of it. I didn't think that. You know, it seemed obvious to me in the moment that those weren't real kicks. They're just like smoke and mirrors. And um, so, uh, you know, the fight was going well in the first round. I got a little tired afterwards. I took the fight on two weeks notice. It was coming off in the injury. So I wasn't in this, the shape I'm used to being in. And I felt like I had to like pace the fight out a little too much. And I could see opportunities to finish him but I and, and progress the fight forward. But um, I felt like I was just like kind of waiting to catch my second win. So um, I still thought I won the fight, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, it did. there were some, you know, you fought for three rounds. It was your first UFC fight. Did you have any octagon jitters? I didn't feel like I did. Um, I think I adrenaline dumped a little bit on the guillotine at the end of the first round, and I suppose it pretty dang hard. It was really tight, um, and I think I had it for, like, almost a minute, and, uh, and he never did get out of it. The bell just went off, but I was pretty committed to that guillotine, and it was pretty pretty tight. He was gurgling and stuff. And so uh, I think I, I put a lot of energy into that. And then, um, you know, but I didn't feel like overly nervous or anything for the fight. And uh, how did you deal with uh, the fight week in general with all the media obligation, uh, obligations and stuff? Yeah, I, I had fun in my last fight week. Um, I took my uh, guy Alejandro Gomez out and we just had a lot of fun. Uh, we got known around the UFC as the fun corner. <laughs> so it was great. <laughs> Uh, I'm guessing you had a great time, except for, you know, the, the result. Uh, but still, what was the biggest lesson you took away from that fight? Yeah, the, um, I need to be in better shape. You know, um, I've notoriously been a pace pusher in my fights. If you watch my fights, I, I basically never slow down. Um, that was like the first time I felt like I had to, but I was coming off a string of injuries and I just got a little conservative in my training and I took the fight on really short notice and, um, you know, it is what it is. I thought that I'd be able to pull off the short notice thing. I, I'd never done a short notice fight, but, uh, you know, I did notice it in the third round. I was more fatigued than normal. So I, uh, completely revamped my training regimen, completely revamped my strength and conditioning and increased the intensity to actually, uh, surpass what I had done in the past. And this was by far my longest, hardest, most grueling camp, which can be seen all over my, my chiseled physique now. Um, except for the fact that it was, you know, for UFC debut. So you had to, to take it, let's put it like this. Do you regret in general taking this fight on, on short notice? Not considering, again, the fact that you know, it was your UFC debut, so it, no matter what, you would have taken it. Yeah, um, not at all. No, uh, I, I regret a few of the way, a few of the decisions I made in the fight. Um, I think that I should have fought him a lot more aggressively. I should have came out a lot harder, a lot faster, and uh, disrespected him in the cage a lot more than I did. Um, he has a kind of a disarming personality too, you know, he's, he's kind of mastered the art of fighting without fighting. He's not a guy that you want to hurt. He's not a guy that wants to hurt you. I felt like I was in a paid sparring match. It wasn't an interesting matchup to me, but I thought, you know, that 
I would dominate him. I should have dominated him. And if I were to fight him again, I would dominate him. But like I said, it is what it is. Chopped it up as a learning lesson. Um, use it as motivation to change my conditioning level and uh, and get in much, much better shape. And so I can push a very hard pace now, no problem. Are you and Levitz on uh, good terms or uh, do you have? Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have bad blood with him or anyone. He's too nice. He's overly nice. He's, he's too nice. I don't even want to be in a room with him. I didn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> you have a point. I, I understand what, what you're uh, saying here. Listen, right now uh, you're scheduled to face Daniel Zelfuber on September 17th. Yes, um, in general, what do you expect from this fight? You had this time you didn't have to, to take your fight on short notice. You had your full cap. Yeah, I had two full camps back to back. So I've trained 16 weeks for this fight. So, um, yeah, we got we got the notice on this one quite early. So um, very different opposites, you know. First first fight in the UFC is my shortest camp. Uh, second fight in the UFC is my longest camp. Um, I expect to to fight, you know, as technically perfect as possible. I'm, I'm in my prime. I'm in my peak physically. I'm in my prime mentally. Um, I'm in my prime technically and tactically. My game is as tight and as organized it's ever been um you know i'm 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 about at the peak of what i can be at so i expect it to to look that way uh, correct me if i'm wrong i just noticed that uh is there a little bit of a bruise or under your right eye no nah, it's just uh people's beards and stuff that's like uh from like friction from rubbing grappling but uh -huh. no, i'm good i'm good but my face should be marked up i'm in a hard camp been sparring a lot of rounds you know 40 45 50 round weeks every week so with a very good competition so okay. yeah but uh you know i'm tapering now we're 10 days out from the fight so i'm starting to recover starting to heal now and replenish my energy let my body recover and get ready for game day who are some of your men's sparring partners and i'm i'm uh, assuming you're still training at glory mma right Yep. So I train at uh, Glory MMA and Fitness and Lee Summit with James Krause. And then I, I own one of the affiliate locations in Overland Park. So um, I got a whole gym of fighters myself. So I'm in Krause's gym three mornings a week and I basically live in my gym. So everybody, you know, um, my main drilling partner in Lee Summit was Ryan Leninger for this camp. 6'3", welterweight, big guy, long guy, tall guy, good striker. Um, And then, uh, you know, sparring a lot with Zach Scroggin, which is an undefeated pro in my gym. He was an undefeated amateur, undefeated pro, 6'3", welterweight, orthodox striker, very good striker. So, you know, I've just been trying to get a lot of rounds with tall orthodox strikers that um, are just bigger, heavier, better versions of the guy I'm fighting. Uh, so you're pretty prepared for this one. Uh, what can fans, fans expect from you? Yeah, domination to a finish. I'm going to dominate this kid everywhere and finish him. Uh, and would you pick uh, a round? When do you see the, the fight ending? I usually predict the second round, you know. The better guys can survive a round, um, and then I pattern them out and finish them in the second, generally. Sorry. I, I, I Could you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I, I lost can you hear me now? Can you hear yeah, me? I said, uh, yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, please. Yeah, I'd say the second round you know i a lot of the better guys can usually survive the first round um and then i pattern them you know in the first round and then put them away in the second round but um you know i'm going to come out and put the pressure on this kid right away bell to bell and i'm looking i'm only thinking about the finish i'm not thinking about rounds or duration or anything i'm going to progress forward to the finish until i have it and now that we are picking fights The main event of the carbon which you're competing is Corey Sandhagen against the Yadong Song. Uh, your pick for that one? Yeah, I, I like Sanhagen in that fight. Um, I like him in general. I like to see him back in title contention, so I definitely have to go with him. Uh, Trey, before I let you go, have you already picked your walkout song? Um, I'm stuck between a few, but I'm probably going to walk out to Stuck in the Grind by Nipsey Hussle. Uh, what is it that you like about it? Uh, well, Nipsey Hussle, if, if you know me at all, Nipsey Hussle is by far my favorite rapper. Um, you know, I just like the essence of the song. I like the the uh, I like the story that Nipsey Hussle tells throughout the entirety of all of his songs as well. So it's just a great jam. That's a fine choice indeed. Trey, I finished my questions. Do you have any last message you would like to share with us today? No, do you listen to Nipsey Hussle? 
Uh, not you know who really. that is? Huh? Uh, you, you said it was a fine pick, so I didn't know if you knew the song. But you got to get on Nipsey Hustle, man. Check it out. I will. That's, I, that's I, the best you, rapper that ever was. Uh, usually, I like to ask, you know, fighters for musical advice since uh, they really get you in the mood. So, yeah, I will check it out for sure. Definitely. You won't be thank, disappointed. <laughs> thank you very much. Best of luck. And hopefully, oh, I'll hear again from you in the future, man. Cool. Thank you, man. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.